For most young working adults, the goal is to be able to afford the basics of living. That is rent, buy a car and monthly groceries, and the general personal upkeep. Not much thought is given to the long term because all young people talk about these days is YOLO, literally translating to you only live once, the mentality of live now, worry later. But life keeps showing us repeatedly with ever hiking costs on the basic essentials of life that it is more important than ever to have sound financial management and that includes considering comprehensive investment plans. For young people, however, the seemingly difficult financial language and process of taking up these vehicles and tools can be demotivating. On this backdrop, as first issues, we've invited a professional from a local commercial bank to speak to some of the issues around financial investment opportunities for young working adults for the benefit of this target group. For young working corporates, our first interaction or their first interaction with money is either maybe when they are given money at home, a whole as a child, a rumi, a hota, a hasho, and buy something, or when they go to high institutions of learning and they have a monthly stipend from the government. So that's their first interaction with money. But you'd find that money management and utilization of money are two different things. Money management is a learned skill. That is, you need to deliberately <laughs> go out of your way to understand the power of money or how far your money can take you as a person on a, on a personal level in alignment to your goals, obviously. So you need to first start off by maybe mapping out what your goals are and what you want to achieve, maybe two or five years or ten years, and then that's where you start. Uh, in terms of uh, young working corporates, the important thing to do is first identify banking products that suit your pocket. I'm sure, um, as you know, there are various uh, financial institutions offering various products and services, so you should really try and um, go through those um, pricing guides and see if those fees are reasonable to you and if they speak to your lifestyle, number one. Number two, in terms of mapping out your investment journey, number one, consider uh, one thing. Is it a realistic goal or is it an unrealistic goal? Because sometimes we take unrealistic goals and try and make them realistic. <laughs> um, and what I mean by that is um, you might walk into a financial institution and um, you're earning your first 10,000 bula, just as an example. Uh, you're excited about starting life and many of your friends are buying cars or you see them you know, on Instagram posting pictures with nice cars and things like that. So that might um, come up with an expectation that you're not realizing the need to buy a car, maybe when you're not ready. At that moment in your life, do you really need to start life by buying a car first or saving towards a deposit for a car if you really, really want a car, number one. Number two, uh, what type of things are you interested in investing in? Because I, can, I, I think we can agree that a car maybe is a, is a personal preference or something to ease uh, a liking of yours. So it's a luxurious investment that we, we do as individuals, and that's okay. But in the long term, are you looking to invest in value accruing assets as well? And if you are, maybe consider doing that first before you purchase a car. Perhaps at this point you could talk to you know, some of these investment opportunities that exist in the market for the young working adult. I usually advise people to develop a strong savings culture. I'm sure the pandemic taught us that something can happen, something unplanned for uh, can happen and uh, that might, might affect several things from your income to your lifestyle, too many things. So uh, create a savings culture, start a savings culture early on in your career. Have a, a flexi-fixed uh, savings account, a notice deposit account, just to uh, mention but a few. There are certain products as well uh, through financial advisors in the bank who will advise you to invest your money in, in, in some tools or some instruments. I'll give you an example. I don't know if you've heard of uh, a unit trust. So that's you uh, putting away a certain amount of money through your financial advisor in the bank, obviously. 
a certain amount of money on a monthly basis to go towards that trust. So a trust functions in a very interesting way. If you're not an active investor or someone who follows markets and you know reads up all these things, because it's quite a lot. It's a career for many for, for some people. So you might want a unit trust because it invests in various um, assets from your properties to your your bonds, your equities, and all of those things. So it then spreads the risk. We're now with your 200 pula, just 200 pula per month. You are and you can call yourself yourself a shareholder. <laughs> Even though it's kind of inactive, but you can call yourself a shareholder. That's where it starts. So are there any considerations to bear in mind before taking up some of these investment opportunities? You consider your income first. <laughs> I may, um, can I afford to make this commitment, number one. Number two, do I want to make this commitment? Number three, why am I making this commitment? What is the goal that you're trying to achieve? Haike Khan, even earlier on, I did allude to the fact that saving is important. 15 to 20% of your income, just save, put it away. But when you invest for a purpose, invest with a goal in mind, you need to uh, sort of um, understand why you are doing that. Then um, I think everything will then um, make it work out well for you as time goes on. Thank you so much for watching First Issues. But before we part, we'd like to find out from you what topics you'd like for us to explore and which guests you'd like for us to have on the show. Reach us on our Facebook platform, handle First Issues. Until next time, have yourselves a pleasant evening. Good night. This program was brought to you in association with First National Bank of Botswana.